Hello, and welcome to the RCD ShareNet. My name is Dave Thompson. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator and ShareNet team member here at the Richmond Centre for Disability. And today we are on our fourth topic in our sexuality and disability series. And today we have a very, very ever-changing and challenging topic of online safety. And we're talking about online safety as it relates to interpersonal relationships, uh, computer dating, um, sexuality, uh, anything like that. And especially now with COVID, a lot of us have turned to the internet for um, a lot of things that we may never have before. And so it's very important that we stay safe, that we stay away from certain types of websites and the dark web and all the other things. And so uh, Sherry and Darren from the LINK program, as always, uh, give us some great information and tools on how to do that. So we, again, this is online safety as it relates to interpersonal relationships. And these videos have been produced by Possibilities with the facilitators Sherry and Darren, and they are from the LINK Safety Relationships and Sexuality program. And I hope you enjoy this one. Hi everyone, I'm Sherry. I'm a certified sexual health educator through Options for Sexual Health BC. I use the pronoun she and her. I'm also a board certified behavior analyst and a clinical supervisor here at Possibilities. Hi everyone, my name's Darren and I'm a certified sexual health educator through Options for Sexual Health and I use the pronouns him and his and I'm also a team manager of Possibilities. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the LINK program. So LINK is a program that's offered through Possibilities and our focus is on safety, relationships and sexuality. We offer a series of different topics on sexual health and these can be offered in a one-to-one -one setting or in a group setting. So feel free to visit our website to get more information and we are happy to support you. Through these series, Darren and I are going to be talking to you about various different sexual health topics. We hope you enjoy them. We hope you enjoyed the series. We look forward to working with you. Hi everyone, welcome to Sexual Health Talks with Sherry and Darren and today we're going to be talking about online safety and pornography, a really important topic to be aware of. Yeah, and I think, you know, the online world is a very exciting place. It can be new for some people, but there's also some things that we should look out for because it, we could put ourselves in an unsafe situation if we uh, weren't paying attention to a few things. That's right. You know, online world is a lot more popular today than it was a couple of like even 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's always on their phone, even when they're waiting. Um, and it's a way that, you know, the internet can be a great place because it's a way that we stay connected with old friends, new friends. A lot of people game online and they chat with other people through Discord or people um, now venture to online dating, right? Because it's a little bit harder to meet people in person, especially through COVID. Um, everybody resorted to online dating. But like you said, while it's really fun, it can be pretty risky. And I think it's important that we talk about all the risks of being online. Yeah, and I think, you know, a place to start looking is just generally passwords and usernames. You know, a lot of people use their maybe their first and last name in an email or even on whether it's Instagram or Facebook, but it is safer if you don't use them, but again, a lot of people do. And also with passwords is, you know, you want to make sure you're not using the same password uh, for different sites. For example, if you use a password with your banking and then with your Instagram, uh, what can happen is uh, now someone has your password, if they find your Instagram password, to get into your banking. That's right. So that can be unsafe. And generally, a website will tell you you need to have, you know, uh, capital letters, smaller letters, a symbol, numbers. I know that for me, I use my phone to help with my password. So it uses my face to know that it's me that's making a password or that's going into a website. I mean, that's an easy way for me to keep track of my passwords. But some people might have just a private book that they write their passwords in and keep it in maybe in their bedroom somewhere where, uh, you know, maybe their trusted person knows where it is, but nobody else. Yeah. And when we're creating online handles and emails, you had mentioned you know, using our first name and last name is not the best idea, but a lot of people do use it. And I just wanted to add a few tips that 
we can keep ourselves safe or try to avoid doing if we are going to put our first and last name. Mm -hmm. So some safe things would be for us to um, not try not to do your full first and last name or your middle name. Try to break it up. Maybe it's like your initial dot your last name. Mm -hmm. Try to avoid putting the year you were born in or your age. Um, Try to avoid associating specifically what city or town you're in. So, you know, Vancouver girl is fine, but if we got more specific to being like Burnaby boy or Northman girl, it becomes really specific. And then if somebody has, a, you know, your first name or last name, and now they know what region you're living in, it can give them a lot more information if that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately online, there are a lot of people who um, their job is to just hack into people's accounts and mm -hmm. get information, right? Well, now it's, you know, robots can do that or, you know, artificial technology can really quickly look through people's information. Mm -hmm. So it's really important uh, to just, you know, use those reminders to help keep yourself as safe as possible. I think it's, you know, really important to talk about red flags. You know, I think a good red flag is if someone's chatting with somebody, um, you know, whether it's through an app or, you know, however they're chatting. If somebody starts right away asking for personal information, like what's your banking information, what's your credit card information, that's definitely a red flag. Yeah. If somebody might ask somebody, where do you live? And, you know, like you said, I think keeping it general is a safer idea than saying, you know, that you never want to say your address. Yeah. If somebody asks for your SIN number or, uh, you know, your credit card number, that's information you never want to share with somebody. Yeah. And if someone did ask where you live, like you could say, I live in Vancouver. And they might say, yeah, but where in Vancouver? Then you can just give something general. Like, I live near Metrotown. I don't have to say where in Burnaby I am, right? But we can say, I'm close enough to Metrotown or I'm close to this SkyTrain Sky station, right? So again, it's giving a little bit of information, but it's not too specific because we don't want to be giving out our street addresses or cross streets mm. right away to people that we don't know and we've never met in person. Some people don't, might not start off right away by asking those bold questions like, hey, what's your account information, right? Mm. Some people might spend a while luring us, so which means they might spend a lot of time talking to get to know your interests, like, mm -hmm. oh, what do you like to do? And, you know, they're focusing a lot on you, asking you a lot of questions, but they're not giving as much information back. And then maybe by the third day that they're chatting, then they might start to say something like, you know, um, what's your address? I want to come see you. Mm -hmm. Or they might say something like, you know, I really want to take you out for dinner, but I don't have enough money. Do you mind maybe sending me some? And then that's where all the red flags can come out too. So I think when we're chatting, be careful for red flags right away from the start. And also be careful if the red flags start to show up a couple days after chatting. Yeah, for sure. I think if somebody was chatting with someone and, you know, maybe a week later they said, hey, I want to really come fly. I don't live in Vancouver. I live on, you know, somewhere else and I need $2,000 to come visit you. There's a good chance if you send someone that money, you're not going to get it back and probably not see them. Yes. And even if they ask for small money, be careful, right? They might say like, can you send me $10 and $20? And every time you talk to them, they just want more and more money. Um, again, no one should be asking us for money. Um, as, as, like if we've met them online, number one, that's a big, big red flag. And if somebody, if you met in person right away too, all of a sudden asked for money, I would also be a little cautious mm -hmm. of that as well. What are some comments that people might make towards us that could be a red flag? I think some, I would be definitely talking about uh, sex really early into a chat if that's something that um, you know, if someone's wanting to, you know, be on a, a, a dating app for a relationship, talking about sex right away is a big flag. That's probably a sign the person's not looking for a relationship. Right. Other red flags would be a lot of compliments right away, you know, saying, oh, you're so beautiful, send me a lot of pictures. Right. Definitely red flags. And uh, somebody asking right away for pictures of uh, nude photos is definitely a red flag for people. Yeah. Actually, why don't we talk a little bit about nude photos? Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, it is a red flag to be asking someone for photos. Um, 
it can be, it is very risky for someone to send a nude photo, but uh, a, a lot of people do that act of sending photos, maybe to spice up their relationship if they're in one or to um, create moments of more intimacy. And some people do it because it's fun and it's flirty, but it's really important that we talk about the risks of doing that and how we can stay safe. So what are the risks to sending a nude photo? Yeah, and I think it's really important too to talk about that. A lot of times we hear it's really bad, we shouldn't do it. That's not real life. Many, many people out there share nude photos and it is just, if that's something that people are wanting to do, how do you keep yourself safe with it? And a, a good rule of thumb is you don't want to have your face in a picture. Yeah. Because if you put, um, anything on the internet that you know you have to kind of think that it could come back later someone could find it later so that's a good rule of thumb is that anything you're any pictures you're putting on the internet um you know that it could be found by someone else later be careful of the platform you're putting up so nude photos should not be going on instagram they should not be going on facebook because our network of people who follow us can see that mm -hmm. if someone chooses to send it to someone through a text message. Like you said, Darren, don't have your face in it. Um, take it from an, an angle that doesn't show identifying marks, such as tattoos, a necklace with your name on it, maybe a very unique birthmark that's very visible. Try not to have those in the photo so that people can't associate that photo with that person. Yeah, and I think it's important too to talk about consent when it comes to photos. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that would be worth a conversation with somebody. You know, you'd want to ask somebody, would you like to see a photo of this? They can say no, and we're going to respect that. Yeah. And if they say yes, then that's definitely a photo that can be sent. But you never want to just send a, you know, a picture of your genitals to someone right away out of nowhere. That is, uh, it's not appropriate. There's no consent there. Yes. And um, we also can't share those photos, right? So if people consent to sending each other photographs, mm -hmm. those two people have to keep those photographs private, yeah. so within each other. It's not okay, and it's actually against the law, to send somebody else's nude photo to somebody else. It's actually a really horrible thing to do anyway, but it yeah. is against the law. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and the reason it becomes against the law is because we can be considered as distributing pornography if we're passing off nude photos or sexy photos of, of somebody in lingerie to other people. Oh, for sure. And I think that someone, you know, if someone's choosing to share that part of them, it's a very vulnerable place for that person to be in. And it's something that we just really want to respect. Yeah. I think another thing with online safety that um, people do talk about or look at is pornography. Um, it is on the online, it's part of the online world. and. You know, a lot of us might have heard that pornography is bad, mm -hmm. um, but actually pornography has its own place and it can be a wonderful tool. People may use pornography to in their relationships because it's enjoyable or to create a, another sense of fun or another level of intimacy even. And some people use Pornography is a tool when engaging in solo sex or self-pleasure, self right? But there can also be some risks to pornography that I think we should talk about. And um, also knowing uh, the difference between pornography and reality of sexual experiences. Yeah, I think it's, you know, like you said, pornography is a wonderful tool that many people really, really enjoy. And that's amazing. But it isn't necessarily always an accurate depiction of what sex is really like. You know, there's definitely, there's no farting in porn sometimes that happens. Yeah. There's, um, you know, people's genitals might look different in porn than they would um, for the average person. So it can definitely look very different. It's a, you know, it's a movie shoot. So it can be, uh, you know, a, a 20 minute clip can take hours and hours to film. So it's, you know, they're making sure they get the right angle. So it, what, you know, is seen in pornography isn't always necessarily um, what real life sex is like. Yeah, I think that's a really important key to remember that if somebody's choosing to watch pornography and they also have to remember if someone's choosing to watch pornography, they must be an adult. Mm -hmm. So we have to be over the age of 18 to watch pornography because it's against the law to be watching it younger than 18. Yeah. And if somebody's choosing to watch pornography, they do have to remember that 
like you said, this is a movie shoot. Mm -hmm. People are paid to be doing this. They look, their bodies look a certain way for the movie. Um, some people get enhancements done on their body mm -hmm. for this shoot. And like I said, in reality, sex looks very different. Um, we see all different types of body sizes, mm -hmm. shapes, um, people will choose to keep their hair or not, right? And some people will keep their clothes on. So it looks very different. And I think if somebody chooses to watch pornography, it's important that they're just watching it for pleasure and not to get answers of what sex looks like or, or to make associations that everybody loves this type of sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important too, to, to talk about child pornography because that is something that is against the law. And sometimes people might stumble on that by accident. So I think it's really important when people are, you know, searching for porn that they would avoid uh, keywords like little, you know, little boy, little girl. Those are definitely, um, you know, it might be a harmless thought, but it might lead somebody into child pornography where it's where they're not wanting to, what they're not wanting to watch. And anything that where somebody looks really young is definitely not something that uh, people should be watching because it could uh, be child pornography. Yeah, or also avoid searching keywords like young or teenage, right? Because again, nobody under the age of 18 should be in any pornographic material. Mm -hmm. um, and if somebody chooses to watch pornography, it's important to remember that that is a private act. Yeah. So that should be happening in your bedroom with the door closed and the blind shut. It should be on your own personal device. Um, so again, if you share a laptop or a tablet or iPad or you share your data with other people in the house it's not a good idea to be watching on those devices because it's shared it's not secure and private to yourself mm -hmm. right and you know if you are watching in your bedroom like maybe be mindful of your volume yeah. right like we don't want it super loud that anybody other people in the house can hear what we're doing as well yeah headphones are a great idea especially if you have like family members or roommates and again there's nothing you know porn is a wonderful thing but it's not it's just a private thing that not everyone needs to know that you're doing just the same as you wouldn't always tell people that you watch pornography that is something you you know again there's nothing wrong with it but it's something that you would um you know generally keep to yourself as a private thing yeah when it comes to online safety some things that we should remember and be careful mm -hmm. of is um, watch out for who we're talking to, mm -hmm. right? So don't share a lot of personal information. Don't give a lot of specific information out right away. Have a trusted person aware if you're talking to somebody. Um, maybe take screenshots if some of the comments that the person is saying mm -hmm. is making you feel a certain way, take screenshots of that so you can share it to your trusted person. Yeah, I think a good reminder is if you're talking to someone online who you don't know, they are considered a stranger, at least at first. So the information that you're sharing with them <clears throat> would be very similar to information you wouldn't want to share with a stranger. Because they are strangers, so that's a good thing to remember. And I think another uh, thing for people to remember would be that whoever's on the internet may not say who they are. Right. You know, so they may send a picture of somebody, um, you know, they may have a persona that they use, but it's not really the person that's there. So it could be someone, someone could say, hey, I'm a 25 year old person, but they're actually older than that. You yeah. know, so people can definitely um, misrepresent who they are. So we should be aware of that. And I think one way to catch that is if somebody's refusing to FaceTime with you, mm -hmm. right? If they are just like, oh, we don't need to FaceTime, I'm tired every time, they have an excuse, they just send you photos instead, that's a sign that they might not be who they say they are, right? So watch out for, we call those catfishing, mm -hmm. so watch out for catfishing um, and watch out for um, information that people are asking for and also just remember that if someone chooses to watch pornography it's real life sexual experiences are different than what the uh, video is portraying to us.
Yeah, and I think a, a really good last reminder would be, you know, if people are online dating, you know, again, many people do, that's completely what mo what many people do nowadays to find a partner, is that if somebody's wanting to meet with somebody off of a dating site or a dating app, it would really be a good idea to, you know, talk to a trusted person about that if you have someone in your life that you feel comfortable talking to about that. But also it's really good to meet someone in public for the first time just to get to know them, just again, because people do misrepresent themselves. Yeah, and I think when we're meeting in public, uh, there's some safer choices we can make, like daylight, mm -hmm. um, a busier public place, right? You know, parks are public, mm -hmm. but there are some parks that are a little bit more remote or nobody's often there. Yeah. So that wouldn't be a safe public place to choose. Yeah, I think some, you know, some good places could be a restaurant, even a movie theater or a coffee shop. You know, there's going to be other people around just in case because, you know, it could be a, a point where you meet someone and you don't feel safe and you think, you know what, this isn't a good for me. I actually do have to go. Yeah, exactly. So we hope, hope you learned quite a bit from us today and we hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hello, I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, we do acknowledge these are challenging topics and not always easy to talk about. So if you have any questions or concerns, please look at the description below for uh, the contacts to the link program and um, please watch for our other videos in this series coming up on sexuality and disability. Bye for now.